Good morning, and welcome to each and every one of you. It is a joy to be God's people gathered together for worship. I want to especially welcome, uh, in addition to those of you who are here in person this morning, those who are joining us on our live stream or viewing the service um, later today. It is also a joy to have all of you with us Uh, We would ask that if you are joining us online, that you please take time to fill out our online attendance form. This uh, helps us keep our church records up to date as to who has been attending church, um, and that way we know that you have been with us. So please do take time um, to fill that out. A reminder that next Sunday, we fall back one hour. Uh, So please remember to change your clocks next week, one hour back. Next Sunday is also All Saints Sunday, and we will have a special service of remembrance here at St. Paul Church during Sunday morning worship at 915 to remember those who have passed on to life eternal within the last year. Uh, Cheryl Cheryl Short has an announcement. Cheryl, we're going to have you come here to the pulpit. Good morning. I just wanted to announce that the God's Creation Calendars, they did come in this week. So if you want one, you can see me. Usually at church, I'll be in the in between uh, pew, between the front and back, uh, to, or they'll be available in the church office when the office is open on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, we also did get the notepads. The, they're not magnetic, but they're just right on. This one happens to have a, a picture of a bumblebee and a flower saying, Behold, all things are become new, from Matthew. So I was just wanting to let everyone know that they are available. These are $7 and these are $2. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Our Tuesday meal ministry is continuing, and we are still serving, you know, close to 300 folks on Tuesdays. So, uh, again, if you would like to be part of that ministry, please let Tammy Zwez know, and she will get you plugged in uh, with helping out on Tuesdays for our Takeout Tuesday dinners. We had um, a wonderful turnout on Wednesday for uh, the service, remembering and celebrating and giving thanks for the life of Reverend Elaine Mikesell. Um, Alan, it's good to have you here this morning. Know that our prayers are still with you. Our prayers are still with Christina and uh, her family as well. The service for Elaine, we had, a tr- we had some trouble with the live stream of that service. Um, I think it cut out less than, um, well, it was partway through that it, the, the live stream cut out. And so we are aware of that, and the service has been edited and uploaded in, in, in its entirety. So it is available for viewing. Uh, you can see the whole service online. And so those of you who wanted to see the end of that service and you were unable to, uh, you can find it now. We would ask again that those who watched that service online, there was a special attendance form uh, for that service as well so that we could let the family know who all had attended. So we hope that you can find that there at www.stpaulucc.com. A few other folks to keep in our prayers uh, today. Laura Kinsel is home from the hospital. She was at St. Rita's this week and came home on Friday. Uh, But please keep Laura in your prayers as she continues to heal. I would also ask continued prayers for Don Warner. Um, I spoke with Don and Kadeen both yesterday. Don, as we said a few weeks ago, has had some ongoing um, tests. I 
uh, have been given permission to tell you today exactly what's going on with Don. Um, he has a tumor on his pituitary gland. And so he will be seeing a neuroscience specialist in Cincinnati this week on Friday. So please keep Don in your prayers uh, for this week for those um, consultations with um, the neuro folks in, in Cincinnati. And our prayers are with um, your whole family, uh, the whole Warner family uh, today, and will remain in our prayers as well. Uh, Janice Wright had some uh, outpatient surgery this week. Janice is home and is, is doing well after that surgery. Uh, but please keep her in your prayers as well, um, as it didn't quite go how she, how she had hoped. Uh, but, but please keep her in your prayers as well. Are there other announcements to share today? The peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Please join responsively in our call to worship based on Psalm 99. Our God is King. Let the peoples stand in awe. God sits enthroned in the heavens. Let the earth resound with praise. The Lord is great in Zion. God is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is our God. Mighty King, lover of justice, you are all righteousness. 
Extol the Lord our God. Worship at God's feet. Holy is our God. You call us to be your people. Help us to remember that our moments and our days, our whole lives are gifts from you. Help us to be your loving children and faithful disciples. Make your presence known to us in this time of worship and lead us ever into your holy light. Amen. little children's message for today. Kids, you stay where you are, though. Um, but for you and for those kids who may be watching from home, I brought something today. I brought, um, I brought a coin. So this one happens to be a quarter. And uh, when we look at it, the two sides of the coin are different. And that's the case for just about every coin, right? We have heads on one side and we have tails on the other. And we say heads because there's usually somebody's head on one side of the coin. This one happens to be George Washington, who was the first president of the United States. Um, and on the back, there's an eagle. And an eagle has a tail, so I don't know if that's why it's called tails. Uh, probably because tails are the opposite of heads on animals. But... Um, Anyway, sometimes when we can't decide something, we flip a coin, we say, and we decide based on whether it's heads or whether it's tails. So, um, for instance, if you've ever watched a football game, like, uh, I don't know, how many, did, how many of you who are here watched the Ohio State game yesterday? Did they flip a coin at the beginning? Yeah, they usually do. They flip a coin to decide who's going to get the ball first. 
right? Because how do you decide to make it fair? So they flip a coin so that it's fair, because they leave it up to whether the coin lands with the head facing up or with tails facing up. Now, some people, when they flip a coin, they try to trick the other person. Have you ever heard somebody say, heads I win, tails you lose? Oh, it's a trick when they say that, because if you say, heads I win, tails you lose, the other person always loses, no matter what, no matter which way it ends up, whether it's heads facing up or tails facing up. In the scripture lesson that we are about to hear, Jesus was talking with some of the church leaders, and they were talking about coins. And they were trying to trick Jesus. They were trying to trick Jesus using the coin as an example because they said to Jesus, is it lawful for us to pay our taxes to the emperor when we're not supposed to recognize the emperor as being anything special because only God is God. But you know what? Jesus knew that if he said yes, that the religious leaders would get all upset with him and say, no, that's wrong. You should not have to pay to the emperor. No, yes. Uh, sorry, I got myself all confused. I wasn't sure if I was on heads or tails just then. Um, but he also knew that if he said no, that you should not pay your taxes to the emperor, that then he would get in trouble with the emperor. So it was a trick. And you know what? Jesus didn't let them trick him. Jesus was too smart for that. And he told them that the things that belong to the emperor, they can go to the emperor. He can have them. But the things that belong to God, well, we should make sure that those things go to God. And did you know that you belong to God? You do. You belong to God. And so everything that you are, you give that to God. You give to God from all of the gifts that you have to offer. And that makes God very, very happy. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for all of the gifts that you have put inside of us. Help us to give those gifts to you by praying to you, by loving you and loving each other and helping others however we can. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Listen and hear the word of God. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. 
When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is God's word given for us and for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Some translations of this text, instead of saying who's whose head is this on on the coin? Say, whose image is this? Whose image do you see on this coin? And it's clear that that money is fashioned in the image of the emperor. Indeed, the money itself is a symbol of empire. Whose image Jesus, in this passage, shows not just that he is a wonderful um, debater, right? That he can think on his feet, that he's got clever answers. But he reminds us of something that is so deep and so poignant, something that we sometimes forget. Much has been made of this passage in terms of taxes (laughs) and whether or not uh, taxes are lawful and whether we as Christians should care about the taxes we pay. Okay, and while I think that you can read scripture in different ways, I think if we make this passage about taxes, we're actually missing the entire point of what Jesus is saying. This is not a passage about paying your taxes. You're not going to get out of it anyway. So you might as well pay them, right? It's what Jesus is saying beyond the words that really matters here. Whose image is on the coin? It's the emperor's image because that coin came from the empire and it is fashioned in that image When Jesus is saying, give therefore the things that belong to the emperor, give them to the emperor, but give the things that belong to God, to God. Whose image are you fashioned in? When we look at the first story of creation in Genesis chapter 1, right? This is Bible school stuff. God created them, human beings, in the image of God. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. That image has been stamped on us. It is how we are made. It tells us where we come from and to whom we really belong. He doesn't come right out and say it. Jesus looks at those Pharisees and looks at us and says, the image of God, the creator of the universe, rests upon you. 
And you belong in your entirety to the God who made you. There is nothing about who you are that God does not know. There is nothing about who you are that God does not claim. There is nothing about who you are that God does not love. What does that mean for us then? To give to God the things that belong to God. Part of what it means is that all of those things that are symbols of the empire, they don't matter. In some sense, they are not real. I wonder how long before this passage will make sense to readers because, you know, are we going to have coins? How many, how many more years will we exchange currency in the ways that we have? The world is changing. And all of the things that we consider to be our wealth, perhaps none of them are real. But what is? Friends, what is real is the life we share. And the world tricks us. The world tricks us into believing that the only things are real are the things that you can see and touch. Right? The things you can lay your hands on. And that's part of what has made this COVID time such a challenge for so many of us. Because all of those physical things... We've had to develop a new relationship around those things, around places and, you know, we're not able to, even now, we're still not able to get together the way that we are used to getting together and we're having to learn that the meaning and depth of life is not about all the tangible things, the things that you can see and touch. It's really about everything that is between us. Between us as the people of God. Between us as those who love one another and care for each other. And also the things that are inside of us. The love that is given to us the love that we give to others. These things are real. These things are worth fighting for. These are the things we live for. The deep, deep feeling that we have for each other our relationships with our children, our grandchildren, our parents, our sisters, our brothers, our neighbors and friends. This is what matters. And we would do well to remember it. So listen to Jesus' words today. Take them to heart. Look in the mirror sometime. Today, tomorrow, sometime this week. And take a moment there. Take a moment there and look, really look. And if you need to, you can say words out loud to yourself. Look into that mirror and say, you are a beloved child of God. 
You are created in the image of the Most High. You belong to God. And all those things that distract us, the coins in our pockets, let the emperor have them. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's. But do not lose sight of what belongs to God. And give to God your whole life. Give to God the things that are God's. Amen. God most gracious and most holy. Your word tells us that in the beginning you fashioned your people in your image. An image of love and kindness, of relationship. We, your children, have been fashioned in love and for love. We pray that you would remind us, moment by moment, day by day, that each of us is holy and precious and belongs to you. Remind us that our moments, the time we spend, that it is currency. Teach us day by day to learn ever more how to give it to you. Turn our hearts toward you, O oh God. Help us to recognize your grace and your love. And let our whole lives be lived in response to the great, great gifts that you have given. We thank you for the gift of love shared between your people and for your faithfulness to us all. We pray, O oh God, that you would help us to live lives of greater service, to trust in you with greater faith, to give you glory each and every day by the way we live. We are especially thankful, dear God, for the greatest gift that you ever gave, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, the gift of yourself, given to show us how your image is to be reflected by humanity. Help us to see your reflection in Jesus and to reflect 
that same image to the world in everything we say and everything we do and everything we are. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray, even as we join together sharing the words that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen.
Blessings to all of you. Have a wonderful week. Why would the other person always win? Service this morning. Thank you once again for joining us for worship this morning. So that we know that you were here for worship, we would ask that you please find our online attendance form. You can find it on the website right above where you clicked to see the worship service this morning. When you fill out that form, please note that we're asking for you to let us know the name of every person in your household who watched the worship service today. Again, thank you so much. Take care, everyone. For questions, concerns, and feedback regarding our live broadcast today, feel free to email us at livestreamstpaulucc at gmail.com. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to support the ministries of St. Paul UCC, you can do so in three ways. You can give on our website, www.stpaulucc.com. You can give by mail, by mailing your offering to P.O. Box 147, Wapakoneta, Ohio 45895. Or you can text the amount that you would like to give to 844-971-1800. Thank you.
and welcome. This is Pastor Becky Sunday. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey,